Deliverance is looking for you. Breakthrough is looking for you, but it cannot access you because you are in prison. You say you are here looking for breakthrough. No, breakthrough is looking for you. But the avenue that breakthrough will come has been blocked. There's a barrier, there's a cage, there's a wall, there's a fence that's not allowing the promotion to reach through, that's not allowing the breakthrough to come through, that's not allowing the healing to reach through. Hi everyone, greetings in Jesus' name. It's time for another Take Care of Your Heart here on God's Heart TV, which means it's a time to feed our soul with the living Word of God. Feeding on the Word of God is feeding on God's wisdom, God's ability, and God's very life. So I pray that your faith would be encouraged and inspired as you join me for a short excerpt from a sermon I was privileged to share at the Synagogue Church of All Nations titled Damage Control, which is a message dealing with challenges we face on a daily basis in our relationships. So be blessed as you watch in Jesus' name. Harboring offense is a self-inflicted wound. You're here today for Jesus to repair you. But if you're harboring offense, you are doing greater damage to yourself. It's like, it's like you're hitting yourself. Let, let, me, let me do that again so you can see it very well. Just anytime you hold a fence, just imagine it like this. When you hold a fence, this is what you're doing. How can she treat me like this after all I've done to her? You're, you're damaging yourself. Oh, we've been together for so many years and she disappointed me. How can this happen? You're hitting yourself. You're damaging yourself. You're inflicting pain on yourself. But you say, but, but, but Brother Chris, you don't know what this lady has done to me. She caused me so much pain. She really pained me. I agree, some situations are painful. But when you harbor a grudge, you are adding pain to the pain. You say, but brother, you don't know the hurt in my heart. This person hurts me so deeply, I can never forgive them. I'm not acknowledging that it didn't hurt. Yes, it may have hurt. But when you harbor a fence, you are adding hurt to the hurt. How then will you get repaired? How then can Jesus repair you and restore you when you have put yourself in a cage? Self-imprisonment. Let, 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 me, let me just do a very quick example to you, illustrate this. Can I have five gentlemen Anywhere you are, just if, if God puts in your heart, just five gentlemen. Okay, number one, come out. Number two, number three, over from this side, number four, number five. Okay, thank you very much. This is a very simple example to illustrate the danger of offense. Now, our brother here, just turn this way, sir. Our brother here represents me and you. All of us who are here today, coming to church with our issues, our challenges. We need Jesus to repair us, the damage that has been done in different areas of our lives. Now, our brother here, very simple. You are going to represent offense. Just turn and stand like this. Okay, our brother here, just come and stand like this, the other way around. You are going to represent resentments, okay? Our brother here, come. You are representing a grudge. Just face the other way. And lastly, my, my father here. You are representing bitterness. Okay, now, the four of you, I want you to lock arms. Lock arms. The four of you, just lock arms. Put your, still facing this way around. Just hold your arms together. The four of you. The four of you, exactly. Hold, sorry, sir. Great. Now, whatever happens, don't let this guy go. Okay, this is your assignment. <laughs> This is your assignment right now. Whatever happens, don't let this man go. No matter how many prayers he prays, no matter how many songs he sings, no matter how many much offering he drops, don't let him go because this is self-imprisonment. Now, I want to give you an example. Our brother here represents me and you. So many of us are here in the church today 
asking God to release us, but we have not released ourselves. We're asking for the restorer to restore us. We're asking for the repairer to repair us. We're asking for the reviver to revive us, but we are in prison. We are holding someone hostage of unforgiveness. Remember, the person most hurt by unforgiveness is you. When you cannot forgive, you hurt yourself more than anyone. You destroy yourself and your future. When you cannot forgive any step you take, you take in darkness. And our brother here is in the church. God, have mercy on me. God, touch my business. God, I'm looking for promotion. But there's a wall around him, a fence around him. And let me tell you something, brethren. So many of us here today are looking for promotion. I want to tell you, promotion is looking for you. Don't say amen too quickly. Promotion is looking for you, but it cannot reach you because you are in prison. It's available. It's on the table. Deliverance is looking for you. Breakthrough is looking for you, but it cannot access you because you are in prison. You say you are here looking for breakthrough. No, breakthrough is looking for you. But the avenue that breakthrough will come has been blocked. There's a barrier, there's a cage, there's a wall, there's a fence that's not allowing the promotion to reach through, that's not allowing the breakthrough to come through, that's not allowing the healing to reach through. No amount of physical strength can break this barrier. Offense, resentment, bitterness, pain of the past. No amount of mental strength, no amount of, of, of connections, no amount of money can break this barrier. Only one thing can break this barrier. Forgiveness. Forgiveness will break down that barrier. Now I'm going to try this again. This time, sir, when you say forgiveness, our four gentlemen here, you're going to clear the way and let our brother free. What can set you free in this circumstance? Forgiveness. Now, he can come. Come and take your promotion. Come and take your freedom. Come and take your... No, 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 too many. <laughs> wow. Okay, two is okay. You, you can come and take them because there's nothing blocking you. There's nothing hindering you. People of God, you will receive in a moment what you have been seeking for years, the moment you let go of offense. Just let go and let God bless you. Now, my brothers, before you go, just, just quickly come back here. Help me stand in a row. I just want to us to talk to ourselves because we all know what's happening in our society and we all know what's happening in our lives. Like I said at the beginning, you know yourself. Nobody knows you better than you know yourself. You know what is damaging your heart, interfering with your joy, your peace, your calmness. My brother, what's your name? Victor. I want to ask you a very simple question. Are you a perfect person? No. Thank you. Sir, are you a perfect person? No. Sir, are you a perfect person? No, sir. Are you a perfect person? No, sir. Are you a perfect person? Not at all. We are living in a world where there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. Why then do you see an imperfect person moving with an imperfect person and you expect perfect results? It's not in this world. Well, why am I saying this? Because it's common today. It's common among us. When, when someone offends us, you see the way people react. People are shocked. People are surprised. People are bewildered as if they are the only one in this world that has been wronged. As if no one else in this world has been wronged. As if they themselves have never wronged anyone. They say, how can this happen to me? 
after all I've done. Don't you know what I'm doing in the church? Don't you know the good works I've been doing? They repay me with evil. What is the meaning of this? As if you're the only one in this world that has been wronged. People of God, everyone has been wronged. And everyone gets it wrong. That is the reason why forgiveness is so important. Because there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. What is happening today? Today, when, when you insult me, I take offense. How can he insult me? But me, I insult others. When you embarrass me, how can you embarrass me? What is the meaning of this? You take offense, but you, you embarrass others. This person, you lie against me. How can you lie against me? But you, if you check yourself, you've lied against others. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have no ground to hold offense against you. You have no ground to hold offense against me. Settle your differences quickly. Damage control. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your living word. Brothers and sisters, if your heart has been damaged by relationships, know this, Jesus Christ is the repairer and the restorer. You just need to let him in. Let him in by letting go of offense, letting go of bitterness, letting go of bad feelings towards others. Because the Holy Spirit cannot share with a heart full of offense, resentment, bitterness. Faith and offense cannot be accommodated in the same apartments. It's not possible. So let go of offense and let the restorer in. Let go of resentments and let the repairer in. For only God who made the hearts can make it new. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for joining me for this edition of Take Care of Your Heart. You can watch the full version of this sermon, Damage Control, on our other channel, Official Brother Chris. We'll put a link in the description below. And God bless you. We love to hear from you. Share your thoughts, lessons, comments from this message in, in the comment section below. And remember, always continue to seek God's heart to see life clearly in Jesus' name. God bless you.